first of all, I want to thank you guys for coming out. Uh, are you ever enjoying yourself at the Gastro Fest so far? Yeah. Now, how many of you guys been here for the demos all day long? You've been here? You've been here a couple times? All right. So my demo is a little different than everybody you've seen. Um, I'm a little special. Yeah. I am. I, I am. I am born and raised here in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, in 2000, I left Jacksonville and moved to Seattle. And there, in 2011, I won um, on the Food Network, which was a lot of fun, a little different. Um, what made that a little fun for me, because everybody thinks just because you go to these high, uh, high price schools, you know how to cook. Uh, no. The, the guy that I beat, he graduated from the Culinary Institute of America. He owned five restaurants. So on paper, he was supposed to beat me. But in the heart, can't handle it. Can't handle it. As they say, did a Duval style. We ride. We ride. <laughs> Put the Duval on them. So today, we're going to be doing some, uh, some fun cooking. You got me on here for about an hour, about 45 minutes or so. And when I moved back to Jacksonville, one of my things was there's so many techniques and so many flavors around the world, I don't want to be labeled as he does this kind of food. So that's what I do. So today, to give you guys some different things, we're going to make a risotto with bamboo rice. And the reason is it's green is from the juice of the of the bamboo. So we're gonna do that. Um, when I teach people how to cook in their homes, I tell you, give me three hours. I teach anybody how to cook, and I won't give you not one recipe. One of the things I, I enjoy doing is I help you build a flavor lab in your refrigerator. So when I was doing this, I went to my refrigerator and I grabbed this. I use this in everything. This is a um, sofrito. My background is Puerto Rican. So I put sofrito in and a lot of different things. A lot of different things. Um, we're going to do some curry vegetables, um, the green beans. Now, when I talk about the, the bamboo rice, you know, I want people to see that there's more than one type of rice. So also I cook with is the Himalayan red rice. It's a longer uh, cooking uh, rice, takes about four to five minutes to cook. But it's uh, very, um, has a lot of fiber to it, very healthy for you. We're going to use some coconut milk. Um, this right here is out of the ordinary. This is a cucumber and Thai basil powder. And what I do with that is I, um, I get the cucumbers and, and the Thai basil and I dehydrate it. And I blend it together and I use this for all kind of fun stuff. Um, this right here. I, I like cooking with local things, and you can't get no local than this. This is um, muscadine grapes. And I, what I did was, my buddy got the grapes and made a wine with it. I asked for the hus, for the hus from the skin. I dehydrated it, and now it's a powder, and I use it for all kind of fun stuff. Um, we're gonna use some fennel seeds. Um, and this right here, from all my travels, um, I do a, I'm a guest chef in Haiti, and one of the things they use in Haiti is, is um, a side dish called pickles. It's a spicy uh, cabbage, cabbage, carrots, um, some onion in there, vinegar, and habaneros, and also use my spice, little bump in there. And speaking of my spices, we're going to be using um, all four of the spices. So in this pot right here, I have a seafood boil. So. Um, it actually comes in a bag. We put the bag in there, just like you would get. So it's the bag like this, with all herbs and spice in there. There's no salt in there, no salt at all. So what I'm gonna do is, I, I bring that to a boil for like 30 minutes and then I will put um, some shrimp in there. The other we're gonna use, the one I use for everything, is called Lil Bump. It's, uh, it has eight, eight spices in it. It will replace everything in your cabinet because everything you have in your cabinet is in that and it's measured. So it has black, white, and red pepper, oregano, thyme, basil, onion, and garlic. All that's in there. Then I have the Chino 5. It's my version of a Chinese five spice. And the reason I mention those first is because, once again, I teach you how to make a flavor lab at your house. This stays in my house all the time. I travel with it. It's called a bump rub. 
And what it is, is the little bump, the Tino 5, brown sugar and coffee. There's no salt in that. And that's what we're gonna cook the, the uh, chicken with. And you'll see that it's sweet, spicy, it don't eat anything else. Uh, what else? Then we have the shrimp. Then we have the Dos Maria. The Dos Maria is a curry powder and it's named after my mom and my grandmother. Since I would hang in the kitchen with them all the time. And this is a pilong. Anybody ever seen one of these before? So I'm, I'm writing a cookbook. I'm writing a cookbook and the name of my cookbook is called From the Pilong to the Plate. So I, I grew up cooking with one of these and the one how many of you guys see my, my uh, photo with me with a little pilong sitting in front of me like this? So what's special about that is that was the same one I cooked with as a kid that belonged to my grandmother. And when I, when I was in Seattle, somebody stole it. And I was crushed. I cried. I was, I was so bad. I was so, so distraught. I was afraid to tell my mom that somebody stole it. And when I finally did it, she says what every mother says, well, baby, you still have the memories. It'll be okay. So I'm like, okay. This pilong, I was a guest chef. I was invited to be a guest chef in Haiti for the 4th of July. This pilong comes from the U.S. Ambassador's house in Haiti. So, which was kind of interesting because she's the, um, the U.S. Ambassador to Haiti from Connecticut and asked me to cook Chinese food. <laughs> I like, okay. Um, and then I'm using herbs today. I like to use a lot of uh, local things. So we're going to be using rosemary and mint. And these herbs are freshly picked. Are they freshly picked? Yes, these are freshly picked. And I'm asking her because she's the farmer from Abundant Harvest. And so when I use fresh herbs, that's where I get them from. So like I said, I like to use a lot of local things to get this thing going. Okay, so. We have that going. Oh, and this pot right here. That's a pot. This is a pot. <laughs> this is the pot I cooked with as a kid with my grandmother. So I still have this. And when when they stole my my grandmother's pilon, my mom said, "Did they take the pot?" I was like, "No," because I didn't take it with me. If they would have took this, I would have been just devastated. Um, and of course, I, I'm old school. I'm old school. So I cook with cast iron. And I, I only cook with cast iron, sadly, in Jacksonville, unless I drive somewhere, because this is weight when I travel. So, <laughs> trust me, I would love to cook with cast iron all the time. So that's what we're gonna cook the chicken in. So let's get the, the pot a little bit of, little bit of heat going under there. And if you guys have any questions while I'm up here, please raise your hands. And I love to be interactive. Ask me questions about what you cook, how you cook, what to do with certain things. I'm all, I'm, I'm here. I belong to you for the next uh, hour or so. And then when we get done, I have my spices over here that, that you can buy. And here's the thing. Everywhere I go, I give away a, a cooking class for six people. In order to get this cooking class for six people, Hold on. Somebody work on the fire department around here somewhere, I know. Okay, so in order to get a, um, a cooking class for, for six people, what I do is this, very simple. You buy my spices, buy the spices, and I want you to take a picture of it, take a picture of it with it while you're cooking or whatever, and post it up to Instagram, and you never know, just might win a dinner. And here's the special thing about my dinners. I'm known for not doing desserts. So you never know who I'm gonna bring in to teach you how to do a dessert. Okay? I've done it, I did a, a dinner and everybody was excited to see because they knew what we was doing a dessert and I don't do desserts. I brought in my friend and she was on Top Chef, just desserts. And she did these margarita uh, droplets. And everybody like, do you feel bad when you do that? I said, no, I don't do desserts. I'm cool with that. <laughs> everybody want me to try for chops, right? And I tell them all the time, if I make it to the dessert round, I won. Hell. <laughs> I'm not, if I make it to the dessert round, I'm cool with that. Because desserts is not my thing. Now I have done made some really nice desserts. I made a... Um, an ice cream, an almond milk ice cream with vodka, or vodka, I don't know if it was um, 
a banana, a banana uh, creme brulee ice cream with vodka blueberries. Now my knife. Here's nothing about my knife. Have you ever seen a knife like this before? <laughs> so here's the thing. Everybody will try and sell you a knife for two hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars. This knife cost me ten dollars, and I can carve swans out of strawberries with it. I can do, I can fillet fish with it. And people are like, why don't I have a hundred dollar knife? Because I didn't grow up with that. I grew up in Springfield with a sharp knife, <laughs> with the wooden handle with the three dots on the back of it. Come on now. So I mean, like, like you know what I'm saying. So that's how I learned how to cook. So I'm not gonna sit up here and tell y'all, listen, gotta get that hundred fifty dollar knife. When they stole my knife kit in Seattle, the, the officer asked me how much was my knife kit cost. I said the knife kit was two hundred dollars. He said, okay. There was a, a cleaver in there for $150 that somebody gave me. There was another knife in there that another chef gave me, and this. I was more pissed than they stole this one. So I, I love my knives. I love this knife here. I keep it sharp. Um, I have very good skills. And I always tell people that they find it interesting because I tell people you don't cut citrus with a straight knife. Because if you cut scissors with a, straight, with a straight knife, it kind of dulls it a little bit. But because I sharpen my knife like a redneck on the back porch, it doesn't bother me. Oh no, I sit on the back porch, put me some country music on, I put some Darius Rucker on, you know, Alan Jackson, and I sit there and I sharpen my knife. I have my dog by my side, you know, true redneck style. So I got onions going in here. Now here's another thing too. Everybody trying and, and chop and everything like they do on television, how everything nice and pretty and perfect. Don't do that. All you need to do is cut everything the same size. Cause so they cook the same size. That's all you gotta do. Cause if you try and do what they're doing in the, in the books, I mean on television and all that, oh, you'll drive yourself nuts. That's like when Thanksgiving, everybody like, oh, what my turkey look like the magazine. How many want your turkey to look like they do in the magazine? I give you the secret to it. You want yours to look like that? All you need is two ingredients. And your turkey will look just like the one on the magazine. Two ingredients. You know what that is? A blowtorch and, and shellac. <laughs> that turkey ain't cooked. It's just, they, they burn it and shellac it. Anybody take pictures? Y'all know how y'all like that shine on there? That's what the shellac does. So if you want to cook like you see in the magazine, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so we got this going. So we're gonna put the rice in. Now I get this rice. If you want to buy this rice, you can go to um, Green Man Gourmet in Avondale. And I have uh, their cards over here with a 15% discount. So you can go ahead um, and check that out. So we got that going. That Anybody take, have any questions? Does that take longer than white rice? What, this? Yeah. You cook this just like risotto. Okay. Now what I do tell people is this. I'm going to be doing this. Um, so we're going to add a little, little bump to this. And I'm not going to add salt to this because there's a salt, a Murray River salt, which is a finishing salt. So when we scoop this up, we'll put a couple of flakes on there. What that does is it's really flaky, so it melts pretty much at, night, at body temperature. So when you put it on, on, the, on the hot rice, it just melts and dissolves and you don't need a lot of it. So the other thing I want to do with that while that's cooking, I want to give it a little bit more flavor. So we're gonna get some, some fennel seeds. I'm a big fan of fennel seeds. Oh my God, big fan. So we're gonna get fennel seeds. We're gonna bang them up. And then we're gonna get some tomatoes. Like I said, you, when, I, when you put it in the pilon, you just want to dice it up and put it in there because it's just used for flavor. 
So how many of you guys kick it home on a regular basis? Wow. <laughs> she made you raise your hand. I mean, you could do all the cooking, huh? <laughs> raise your hand, baby. Raise your hand. So we're just going to mash all this up together. And like I said, when I use this versus putting it in a processor, to me personally, it gets a better uh, aroma out of it because you get the oils to mesh together. So then, add that in there. Now the other thing that you can do too is, with this water here, and you put your shrimp, your crab, carrots, potatoes, everything in there, save some of the water and make a rice out of that. I wish they had a mirror up here so you guys can see all this. I'm too short, so can y'all see me over the pots? Okay, I'm just checking. Cause I see the top of his head, so I don't see nothing else. Now just like risotto, add it piece by piece, a little water at a time. And when I, when I tell people to make risotto, one of the things I tell them is, they always ask me, how long does it take to make? It tastes like the Italians say, grab your glass of wine or a bottle of wine, have a good time. Sit there and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir and you'll be good to go. Um, so now with, with the chicken, what we're going to do with the chicken is, Now when I cook, um, I cook like a bachelor, which means I'm gonna use this bag, dump it in the pan and cook it, and I'm, I'm cleaned up. <laughs> like, like, okay, perfect example. Like these pans right here, I call them bachelor pans. Cause once you're cooking them, wipe them out. Don't let your wife and girlfriend see it. Put it back in there clean, you know, come on. So we're gonna get some of this. The no, no, this is the um, the rub that has the coffee. Okay. And people always ask me what kind of coffee to put in there. And I tell them, you know, whatever you like. I prefer a Sumantra coffee. It's a nice bold coffee. And you just wanna, you know, toss it around. You know like the old commercials say? It's shake and bake and I help. That's all you gotta do. So I got my, my cast iron skillet nice and nice and hot. So when I put this in, it's gonna cook real quick. Anybody have any questions for me? Yes, sir. What you huh? What, you what am I making? Yeah. See, that will happen when people come late to class. <laughs> and that will happen when people come late to class. I knew that was coming. Jesus Christ. So we're making a. Uh, I'm doing a little crab, little, little crab oil right here, making some uh, bamboo rice, and we do some curry vegetables right here. And then here's gonna be the chicken. Now with the with the curry uh, vegetables, I'm gonna use coconut milk. And when I use the coconut milk, I want to have it thick. Well, instead of using flour to thicken it up, I'm gonna use a plantain. Yeah. So what happens is, oh, and here's that my grandma tell me to find out the sweetest plantain. The ugly it looks, the sweeter it is. So I think this is gonna be a real sweet plantain. So, um, so yeah, that's what I do. And what it happens is, the um, you get this and you mash it down and put it in and it will thicken up anything. I've done a shrimp scampi, uh, a tropical shrimp scampi, and I use plum wine, orange juice, and with that sauce, I get a piece of banana, smash it down, stir it in there, and it thickens up. So yeah, you know, you can do some fun things like that. Ta -da, ta -da. So now, <clears throat> if you guys want to know more about me, you can either ask me questions right now or go to my website at chefarmadance.com. How many of you guys on social media? Everybody on social media? How many on Instagram? Nice. 
And you can follow me on Instagram at, at Chef Amadeus. Um, and when I'm on my tour, you can always follow me, see when I'm coming back to Jacksonville. And when I come back to Jacksonville, I'm doing more events at, I'm doing a Latin dinner um, at top of that. And um, at Five Points. Uh, I'm doing a vegan dinner um, over at Vegan Cooking Classes at the beach. Um, I'm doing, see what's in the vegan, vegan. I'll be doing little private dinners over at Three Layers in Springfield. So like I said, I'll be coming back. And then when I travel, when I travel and come back, I always bring something or somebody back with me. Yeah. So my chef friends want to come to Jacksonville all the time. So they want to know why did I move back to Jacksonville? And I tell them, first of all, I can wear shorts in December. That's the big thing. So, <clears throat> now rosemary is one of my favorite herbs. <clears throat> I'm a fan of rosemary. And the other thing that's kind of fun to do with rosemary, and you can buy these herbs as well. Uh, okay, you can buy these herbs, right? Yeah. So you can buy these herbs. So I'm using um, rosemary and mint. Oh man. And the mint and rosemary is, is one of those flavors that I find that goes quite well together. Um, I just like the way that it smells and it's just awesome. So put that back there. Now, I, bought, I got some herbs from her and the way she packs them for you, they actually stay fresh in your refrigerator. She puts holes in the bags, right? You put holes in the bags and put a, a damp cloth in there. Three, four days later, they still nice and green and full of flavor. So what I'm gonna do with this is, get the rosemary. Now don't throw away the stems now, cause the stems, you can throw them in there as well. So I'm gonna get some olive oil. Oh, this is a, a Korea Hawkins from Abundant Harvest. So I guess that's where I get my fresh herbs from. And coming up this summer, we're gonna do a barbecue and crab boil at her farm. Yeah, yeah. So one of the sauces that I'm gonna use, so in, in, the, in the seafood boil, there's no salt in that. I normally tell people to put um, a lemon or lime in there. A salt over at um, Green Man Gourmet, it's called lime fresco. It has a lime flavor to it. And I'm gonna add that to the seafood boil. And then I'm gonna also add just a touch to the rice. And when I put this in, in the uh, in the pilon, I'm looking for the, oil, the oils from the herbs to come out. I put a little olive oil in there to help, help release it and a touch of the salt, just to help you release some of that. Just a touch to give you a little grip to it. Oh man, that smells good. All right, so now, come over here. Like I said, I don't want you guys to go home and think you gotta chop your herbs up all nice and pretty. Cause keep this in mind, when you guys cook at home, you're not cooking for presentation, you're cooking to feed somebody, right? There you go. So this is pretty much all we got to do right here. Whoop, whoop. So now, let's get this, uh, oh, this pan is nice and hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, with the curry vegetables. Oh. Yes, ma'am. I have four, the Lil Bump, Chino 5, the Dos Maria, and the Seafood Boil.